Hello and welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at the watch command. The watch command in particular allows you to run a command over and over and over again. Now at first that might not seem all that useful, but when you see some of the use cases that I'm going to show you, it might actually click in your mind right away why it's such a great command to know. And by the end of this video, you will know this command because we're about to go over it. Now, before we get into that, I just need to mention the sponsor for today's video and actually the sponsor for the majority of this series. And that sponsor is Linode. If you haven't already heard of Linode, well, they're a Linux focused cloud server provider. And with their platform, you can spin up your very own Linux server in mere minutes. And considering that there's over 40 videos in this series as of recording time, with many more coming, Linode is a great service that you could use for spinning up test servers and you could use those test servers to go along with the various tutorials that are available on this channel. And by using the URL that you see on the screen right now, that'll get you $100 in free credit towards your new account, and that credit is good for up to 60 days. And by using that URL, you're actually supporting Learn Linux TV, and I'd greatly appreciate that. And their platform is great for more than just spinning up test servers. The note is the real deal when it comes to providing cloud computing resources. You could literally run your entire business on Linode, or you could use it to do something fun like spinning up a Minecraft server so you and your friends can build a world online together. The only limit is your imagination, so definitely check them out. Thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring yet another episode of the Linux Crash Course series. I really appreciate it. Now, without any further hesitation, let's dive right into the watch command. It's a great command to know, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know, so let's dive right in. Now I mentioned that the watch command can be used to execute a command over and over and over again. But why might you want to do that? Well, let's set up the command and then I'll show you an example, a completely random example, but a good example of one use case where this might actually be a command that you'd want to run. Now in my current working directory, I have these directories right here. Let's say for example, I have a coworker, another Linux administrator that wants to send me a file. And maybe I told them to copy it right here to my home directory. Now, as an aside, I probably shouldn't give access to my home directory to anyone. But then again, Linux administrators have root privileges so they can access my home directory regardless. But anyway, let's just go along with it. Let's just assume another Linux administrator is going to be transferring a file directly into my home directory. And I just wanna know when that file actually appears so I can do whatever it is I plan on doing with that file. Now you just saw me use the ls command. Then what happens if I type watch and then ls? Well, actually it's going to execute by default whatever command I give the watch command over and over again every two seconds. So in this case, every two seconds, it's executing ls. Now watch what happens when I simulate a person copying a file over here to my home directory. Now check that out, importantfile.txt just appeared. Now in this case, this is a very simple example. The watch command, like I mentioned, is going to execute the command over and over again every two seconds by default. So maybe I could just leave this terminal window open and I'm just waiting for this file to appear. And then once that file was actually transferred, the next time the ls command runs, you know, two seconds after the file is copied, then it's going to show me that the file is here in my home directory. And maybe that's all I wanted. I just wanted to know when that file was going to show up. Now it's here, so what I could do is hold Control and press C to break out of this. And now I'm back to the command prompt. Now, is that the most useful example of the watch command? Well, probably not, but it is an effective one. But what I wanna do right now is show you some additional examples. So let's get right into it. Now, one example of an actual use case in which I would want to use the watch command, and this has actually happened, is maybe I want to keep an eye on storage. So if I type watch and then df-h, the disk-free command in human readable mode, basically, and I press enter, it's going to show me the amount of available space that I have on the system. And because I'm running this command every two seconds, as soon as that changes, the amount of space changes that I'm using, then this is going to be updated. And I'll see that right here. Now, if there's a situation where I have a script running that's going to generate a bunch of files, and I'm not really sure how many files it's going to generate. I just want to keep an eye on the storage. 
then this might be one way that I might do that. Now a similar example is going to be watch with the free command. The free command tells us how much memory is free and dash M is going to show the results in megabytes. So right here, we are seeing how much memory is used on this particular Linux instance. If there's any change to how much memory is being used, then you'll see that change right here. So if I was to kick off a script behind the scenes, we could actually watch the memory change. And I'm going to cause a change to happen right about now. So although the numbers aren't changing a lot, we are seeing that the numbers did change a little bit. And actually it's still fluctuating a bit. Basically what I did is I used SSH on the back end to connect to this server from another terminal session. And inside that terminal, I just ran sudo apt update. I figured that would definitely consume some memory. So I figured that was an easy command that I could use to trigger a change. And here you can see that it did change. Now, obviously going over how to understand the output of the free command and how much memory is free, that's another video in and of itself. I actually already have a video that goes over that in the same series. So I'm not going to explain exactly what these numbers mean, but what you just saw was the numbers changing. Because the watch command is going to execute the command every two seconds, that actually allows you to monitor things. And that's a good use case for the watch command. Now what I'm going to do is repeat the same scenario again, but I'm going to do one thing a bit differently. I'm still going to execute the watch command along with free dash M, but what I'm going to do different this time around is I'm going to apply the dash D option to the watch command. And what that's going to do is cause the watch command to highlight anything that changes. So what I'll do is cause that same change to happen. I'll run sudo apt update in the background yet again, and we'll see the numbers change. Now notice how some numbers are highlighted. The dash D option is going to cause the watch command to highlight anything that's different. It's not required or anything like that, but in my opinion, it actually makes it a lot easier. It draws immediate attention to whatever's changed. Now another option that I want to go over is the dash N option. So I'll add it right here and I will set it to 0 0.5. Let's see what happens. Now at first it looks pretty much the same, right? But if you take a look at the upper left hand corner, instead of saying every two seconds, it shows every 0 0.5 seconds. So what that means is that you have the capability of actually customizing how often it reruns the command. By default, it's every two seconds, but maybe that's not fast enough for you. Or maybe it's too fast and you want to change that to 10 seconds. You can absolutely do that. Anyway, what I'll do is just go ahead and create that same scenario again, where I run apt update in the background. So because of the dash D option, we're seeing the highlighted changes, but as you can see, it's going by a lot quicker. That's because it's updating every 0 0.5 seconds. In fact, it might even be too fast because it's updating so fast that the highlight doesn't even have all that much time to stay on the screen. So what I can do then is change it to every three seconds. I think that should be fine. And now it's going to update every three seconds. So the highlights will stay on the screen longer. Maybe that'll give me more time to notice the difference. Now, every time I perform an apt update in the background, it's going to actually cache and then it's not going to take as long to run every time it runs. So it still kind of went by a little bit fast, but you were able to see the difference nonetheless. Now, as far as what you should use the watch command for, just use your imagination. Anytime you want to view the status of something and you want to be notified when the status changes, the watch command might actually be a good command to run for that use case. Now let's take a look at one last example before I close out this video. Near the beginning of the video, what I did was I used the ls command as an example with the watch command. And specifically, I was looking for important underscore file dot txt. And in that example, I wanted the ls command to run over and over again, because as soon as that file appeared, I wanted to know about it. But what I'm going to do now is actually reset this example. And I'm going to show you another variation of the watch command, but this one is actually going to fail. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to use the watch command again with the ls command. Maybe I want to use it with ls dash lh, just like that. That's a perfectly valid use case for the watch command. You saw that earlier. But what if I wanted to grep for just that particular file or just the thing that I'm looking for? 
Now, normally what we could do is actually pipe a command into grep if we want to limit the output to just that thing, but this is actually going to fail. But it's actually kind of silently failing because even when I create the file, it's not going to show it. So when you deal with pipes or redirects like this, then the nature of the watch command actually changes. The command is just not simply going to work as we want it to work the way that I've typed it. And again, here's that command. So how can I run this command and actually have it work? I mean, this might be a very valid use case. Perhaps I would rather not see all the other files in that directory. I just want to see this one file right here. The grep command is a great way to do that. You want to limit the output to just that thing. Well, actually, the solution to this problem is very simple. All we have to do is add quotes around the command that we're trying to run if we have a pipe involved, as we do here. And it's running. And we can even see that the output is different. We have the every two seconds on the upper left-hand corner. So if I didn't know any better, then I would assume that everything is going to work just fine. But let's see. So on my other computer, I'll create that file and let's see what happens. And there it is. So if you're curious how to use the watch command with commands that contain pipes, well, now you know. It's literally that simple. Just use single quotes. And that'll make it work the way that you want it to. So as you can see, the watch command is far from the most complicated command that I've ever gone over in this series, but it is a very useful command that you should definitely know. You could use it to run a command over and over again. That comes in handy when you are checking the status of something, as you saw in the examples earlier, but I'm sure you could come up with examples of your own. It's definitely a very useful command, and I recommend that you commit it to memory as much as you possibly can. Anyway, did this video help you out? Did you enjoy this particular episode of the Linux Crash Course series? If you did, then please consider clicking the like button to let YouTube know that you found this video helpful. I'd really appreciate that. Either way, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. There's definitely more to come. So I'll see you in the next video.